Today we are going to study about electrophoresis. Electrophoresis describes the migration of charged particle under the influence of electric field. We all know many biomolecules such as amino acids, peptides, proteins, nucleic acid, they possess ionized well groups. Therefore, at any given pH, depending on the pH of the medium, they can exist as electrically charged ions and uh, that uh, charge will depend on the pH of the medium therefore they can exist proteins uh, can uh, exist as cations or anions even amino acids so under the influence of electric field these charged uh, particles will migrate either to the cathode or to the anode depending on the uh, net charge present on that molecule the principle of this technique is if a molecule is having charge due uh, then if it is placed in an electric field of strength X, then this particle experiences a force which allows it to accelerate. The force acting on it is Qx. This is uh, balanced by frictional resistance F to give a terminal velocity V. So the equation becomes Qx is equal to Fv. Now assuming Stokes law for spherical molecule, if uh, the particle is spherical and has a radius r, then uh, it is moving through a medium of viscosity eta, then frictional resistance f is equal to 6 pi r eta. Now we uh, put the value of f in this uh, first equation. So uh, we get from above two equation, we get uh, qx is equal to 6 pi r eta v. Uh, so, uh, the electrophoretic mobility mu of a molecule is defined as migration per unit field strength. So, mu is equal to V upon X is equal to Q upon 6 pi R eta. The mobility of a molecule thus depends upon the viscosity of the medium eta, the size and shape of the molecule which gives the radius R and charge on the molecule Q. When a potential difference is applied uh, on the molecules, with diff the molecules with different overall charges will begin to separate. Owing to the uh, different uh, charges, uh, they will uh, separate due to different electrophoretic mobilities. Even molecules with similar charges, they will separate if they have different molecular sizes since they experience different frictional forces. So, some forms of electrophoresis rely only on different charges on the molecules to effect uh, bring about separation while other forms of electrophoresis they exploit the differences in the molecular size and therefore encourage frictional effects to bring about separation of components of sample present uh, in that mixture. If electric field is removed before the uh, components of the sample can reach the electrodes then uh, this will have be, uh, the components will have been separated uh, according to their electrophoretic mobility. So electrophoresis is in complete form of electrolysis. Separated samples can be located either by staining uh, uh, them with a suitable dye or appropriate dye and if the samples are uh, radiolabeled then uh, we can break them by autoradiography. Current in solution between uh, electrodes is conducted by buffer ions and very small amount of, uh, of it is conducted by sample ions. So according to Ohm's law which gives the relationship between current voltage and resistance R, V upon I is equal to R. So we can uh, enhance the rate of electrophoresis or accelerate the electrophoretic separation by increasing voltage which would cause increase in current. So the distance migrated by ions will be proportional to both current and time and the electrophoretic rate will increase. But this would uh, cause the generation of heat which has the following effects. Uh, due to heat, the rate of diffusion of sample and buffers uh, uh, will increase and therefore the samples uh, will uh, appear as broad bands uh, and the separation will not be as clear. Then formation of convection currents will take place in the buffer uh, which will lead to mixing of separated samples. Uh, and uh, many biomolecules are thermally instable like the proteins etc. Therefore uh, those samples can get denatured. Then decrease of buffer viscosity will also take place and this will cause reduction in resistance of the medium. So,
these are the factors that will affect electrophoretic separation. Electrophoresis can be done in two type, kinds of apparatus. Uh, the requirement for electrophoresis is a power pack and an electrophoretic unit. The electrophoretic unit can be either vertical gel electrophoretic unit or horizontal gel electrophoretic unit. In vertical gel electrophoretic uh, unit, the electrophoretic unit consists of two buffer chambers. The upper cathode buffer chamber and the lower anode buffer chamber. Here, between the glass plates, the gel is cast. The spacers are present between the two glass plates, and when the gel is poured over it, comb is attached so that wells can be formed. When this has solidified, we remove the comb and uh, attach the uh, glass plates along with the gel uh, in the electrophoretic apparatus and clamp it. So that electrophoresis can take place and in the wells we load the sample. The, the upper is cathode that is negatively charged and the lower uh, uh, electrode is generally anode. So uh, buffer is filled in both the chambers and then electrophoresis is done. Proteins are separated by this method and uh, in the case of uh, nucleic acid horizontal gel electrophoresis is done. In horizontal electrophoresis apparatus here there are two buffer systems uh, chambers, one is the negative electrode that is cathode, the other is anode. There is a cooling plate over which gel is kept and gel is uh, attached uh, or dipped into the buffer by help of wick and uh, sometimes uh, in nucleic acid the gel is immersed in the buffer, buffer is full to the top and then wells are present in the gel where we will load our sample and then electrophoresis is done.